Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. If this is your first time with us, um, this is our segment of After Church, where we come to dig a little bit deeper, where we come with questions and thoughts um, um, about what was taught, what was preached. And again, we're never here to um, criticize, uh, pick or pull apart um, the, the, the man or woman of God that brought the message. We're not here for criticism. Um, we're here to, and also we're not here to critique, but we're here to ask our questions for understanding, to help us to understand how to apply the word of God to our lives. And it, it, the segment is just exactly what it says after church. What do you do after church? What do you do after you have heard the word of God and how are you applying the message, the scriptures to your everyday living? Yes, ma'am. After church is not about going back and rehearse the word of God. It's not about going back into the whole sermon over again. And we thank God what God does after church. And what do we do after church? A lot of times we talk about the word of God. Man, that was a powerful thing. Man, I received some, just different things, and we thank God for this segment that he has given to us. And, you know, just to echo, not echo him, but we've been doing this now probably about two years or better, ever since we were in the building at the hotel when we were holding our services there, and God birthed that through First Lady as far as doing after church. You know, because a lot of time we rushing out, say, man, well, you know, what are we going to eat at? What are we going to eat at? Then we begin to sit down, even eating at the table, talking about the sermon, talking about the message, talking about how God moved, talking about, oh, my God, just different thing. And that's what after church is really about, just going deeper. And we thank God for each and every one of you all. Amen. And then also, you know, when you're when the preacher is preaching, that's not the time to stop the preacher in the middle of the sermon and asking questions, unless, you know, there's a platform or a time that the preacher opens up the the floor for questions. So there's, but that's not the time to ask your questions. You know, you ask your questions in, um, to yourself and write your questions down. And, you know, with after church, this is what we like to do. We like to discuss and dig a little bit deeper into the word of God. So pastor preached again about um, letting faith arise. Let faith arise. He's on part eight. This was part eight. And um, what is it? What was the subtitle? Um, faith to believe. Faith to believe. Faith Coming to believe. from Mark chapter 11, Amen. verses 22 through 24. Um, and again, let, let faith arise. You know, and again, this is, you know, where we're asking questions. Uh, my question to myself was, um, well, I know it was one, at one point you said, God checks the temperatures. Um, <clears throat> and that made me, of course, think about a thermometer. So when you, if, if we're going to let God check our temperatures, I, I begin to look at this as, First of all, in order for someone, I started thinking about going to a doctor's office. Mm -hmm. You're going to, when you look at this, going to a doctor's office, when you look at this in the natural, when you go to the doctor's office, um, usually something's wrong. Mm -hmm. You may have, whatever's going on, one of the things that they do is they check your temperature. Like now so, with a gun with COVID. <laughs> yeah. So, but, but you have to submit. Yeah. There's a part of submission where, um, yeah, when, when they use that little gun, handheld little mm -hmm. gun thing, yeah. gun, temperature gun, you lean in. Mm -hmm. like, Sometimes you, yeah. you have to lean in <laughs> for them to check your temperature or you open your mouth for them to use the, um, mm -hmm. the, the, um, the thermostat. Moment. Not, yeah. Thermometer. Wow. Did I say, <laughs> did I say thermostat earlier? Yes. I meant thermometer. <laughs> I began to think of well, yeah. a thermostat and a thermometer yeah. when you're checking the temperature. So, but with a, th a thermometer, you have, there's a part of submission, a point of submission. Exactly. Amen. Um, you can't keep your mouth closed. Exactly. Uh, or sometimes they may put it under your arm. You know, for children, yeah, sometimes they put it under your, Amen. you know, they put it under their arm. But again, there's a part of submission. So 
when you look at this spiritually, you know, as a part mm-hmm. of submission, if you want, if God is going to check your temperature, you have to submit your heart. Your heart has to be open. Um, there's, you're submitting your will. Mm-hmm. You're submitting your thoughts. You're submitting your actions. You're submitting yourself unto the word of God. So if he's checking your temperature, you have to open your heart. Just as in the natural, if your temperature is going to be checked, you have to open your mouth or you have to submit. You have to be willing to let someone examine you. So if we're going to let God check our temperatures, he's going to begin by checking our heart. So uh, we, we need to open our heart unto the word of God so that he can check our temperatures. And of course, that temperature is checked through the word of God. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I was just thinking, um, temperature check. Wow. You know, um, faith to believe God. And, and the thing about it is that here it is, man, you right. Man do it different ways, but God checks it from the spiritual heart side. Amen. And this is, this, you know, when you think about the word of God, the word of God, you know, God knows what we need. We don't know what we need ourselves. In, in times of elevation, in times of uh, moving as far as increased level and different things, and sometimes we think that it's our time. We Sometimes we think that it's time to do this and time to do that. But when it all said and done, who can do it in such a better time as if it's not now or if it's not then, we still have to have the same faith that brought us to where we at to continue to believe that sooner or later it's going to happen, the blessing of the Lord. Amen. So, you know, and, and again, with checking your temperatures, um, we need to, you know, a lot of times we, we, in the natural, we go to our doctors maybe every so often for a yearly exam. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but we don't want to wait for a year to allow God to examine us. Wow. That's, that's we don't want to yeah. wait an entire year. Yeah. So this is, this is why it's so important for us to mm-hmm. be engaged in reading our word Amen. daily. Amen. Daily. So that we can be examined daily Amen. rather than waiting until a year. Um, mm. cause a lot of times when we go to our doctor's um, for our yearly checkups or an exam, mm-hmm. sometimes, you know, nothing, nothing is necessarily wrong, but wow. we're just going for a yearly checkup. And, you know, in the course of that, y- he may see something mm-hmm. that's not necessarily wrong, but maybe like, for instance, I'll say, um, my blood pressure, mm-hmm. say that maybe my blood pressure is a little elevated. So he will say, look, you need to watch this. Be careful. I'll Look at back. this, or yeah. yeah, um, do a little tweaking in your 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 mm-hmm. eating habits. Change some eating habits, or he may begin to ask questions. Well, what are you doing differently than what you were doing a year ago? Why is your blood pressure elevated? Why have you gained weight? What's mm-hmm. going on here? So he may begin to look at some things, and again, um, just to um, do some things that we can. Um, to get that under control, mm-hmm. to make it better so that so that it doesn't reach a point where it's out of control. We mm-hmm. want to make sure that it's in control. So on the same thing with the word of God, if we're doing this daily, we don't get to the point where things are built up in our lives, um, where, where habits become, um, um, become the norm in our lives. Mm. Wow. And I, and I, and I, I'm thinking, you know, <laughs> it's, it's awesome how, you know, we shouldn't wait. You know, a lot of time we, when something go around, or when you go to the doctor for one thing, sometimes he's going to ask you about other things in your area. Also, as far as in your life, does, does you, are you experiencing well, the pain here, this and that? But I, I love when it says, you know, as far as the word of God, what the word of God that we can speak and say to these mountain, these things that's in our life that shouldn't be there and trust God and it will be removed. It's, it's just awesome how we just got to trust God. You know that, um, you know, let me just, this mountain and, and how many times we say, well, I've been dealing with this situation. I've been dealing with that. 
And, and the thing about it, I pray that even some of y'all that, you know, come on and watch this, whether it's late or whatever, go back and even as it's being downloaded on YouTube or look at the video, because, you know, that message really, really not only touched my heart, but it blessed my heart to be a blessing to others. Because, you know, the thing about this, so much good points, not only in the sermon, but in the message, but in the word of God, that when we read the, the word God give us a different revelation each time. We just have to have faith to believe the word of God. Amen. So speaking of faith to believe, when you came from um, Mark chapter 11, verses what, 22 through 26 or 7, something like that. But you began with verse 22, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Um talking about the um the father's the father and his son uh, the the son that had the deaf and dumb spirit or dumb and deaf spirit but looking at verse 22 when it says in all times it it had cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him and the father is as he's going to Jesus well backing up a bit when the father, he went to the disciples and he told Jesus, well, you're, I went to your disciples to cast out the spirit and they couldn't do it. Um, but in verse 22, he says, but if thou canst do, if thou can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said unto him in verse 23, if <laughs> he said, if thou canst believe all things are possible to him that believe. So Jesus didn't address anything else, but Jesus said to him, what do you mean if, so if, if, if you can believe it's not about what I can do, it's not about what Jesus can do. It's, it's all about what you believe. So Jesus said to him, if you can only believe all things are possible to him, they believe and straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe help my unbelief. So that's just so interesting to me because as believers, mm -hmm. it tells us that we can, we can believe we, while we, while we are believing, while we are still believing, we can have unbelief. And what, is, but what, is, how is that possible? How is it possible for us as believers to believe but yet still have unbelief. And, but, and what is the unbelief? One, um, one scripture, I believe in the message translation, translation, or either the passion translation, it said doubts. It used the word doubt. Um, another translation referred to it as little faith. You still have faith, mm -hmm. but it's just very, it's, uh, it's very little of it. Wow. You know, in these last couple of minutes, let me just say this because, you know, um, who would have thought, <clears throat> who would have thought when you think about it, because uh, it's just all about faith to believe, but who would have thought that we would have still been experiencing what we're experiencing when we thought that the pandemic was gone and all of our suck around? <laughs> who would have thought this? None of us. We, you know, when you hear about something hitting, something coming, you think it's just, it's not there to, to linger or to stay. And, and the thing is, is that here it is, God has given us, you know, the Bible said, um, death and life are in the power of the town. We got to speak to this thing. We got to speak to these mountains. We got to pray. And I love what Jesus said, that this kind only come by praying and fasting. Amen. Pray to God on these situations, fast to God, and watch these mountain of different things that we're experiencing um, even now and even is to come. And that's why we got to continually stay in this word of God. It's the word that's going to watch this. The battle is not ours. It's the Lord. Amen. Our job is to, to stay in the word, to pray to God, read the word, and, and, and look, this is your ammunition. This is your weapon right here. The word of God. Amen. And, um, and you know, again, back to Mark 
chapter 9, and those scriptures, verses 22, beginning with verse 22, or really, beginning with verse uh, 14, beginning with verse 14, you know, just, you know, whenever, uh, don't, let, let, how do I put it? Don't let anyone make you feel as if you're, um, you're not a believer if you have doubt. Because clearly, as human beings, we will have doubts. We will have doubts, but we don't stay there. We, we need to get to the place where we acknowledge. Because see, this is what, when this, it was so key when this father who believed, because he still believed, but he acknowledged that there were doubts. Mm -hmm. He acknowledged that Amen. there were doubts. And see, this is when we get help. If you can't acknowledge where you are, wow. there's no help. The Amen. help can't come if you Amen. don't acknowledge what your issues are, Amen. what your doubts are. Um, and you know, and what I love here, he didn't, he didn't say, well, I'm doubting this and I'm doubting that in particular, I'm doubting. He just said, help my unbelief, mm -hmm. help my doubts. Yeah. And your boys couldn't do it. <laughs> Wow, to God be the glory. So the thing about it is that, and this is where we still have to trust God and um, just believe God's word because um, the word didn't, the word never failed. The word never failed. And, and this is where we have to continue to trust God at his word. Amen. When it all said and done, I'm telling you, um, glory, hallelujah, my God, just, just stay in the word, stay in the word, trust God. And when it all said and done, we're going to see the manifestation of his glory. After this, there's going to be glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. So once again, we thank God for you all joining us for After Church. Anything else? No, I was just thinking about the scripture, too, that said, um, um, what was it, the scripture? Oh, an, un, um, mm -hmm. an un, um, what was it, an unstable man. A man that what was James, the scripture in James, one yeah. five, and five, um, and double-minded man, double -minded is man. unstable <laughs> yes. in all his ways. Yeah, so you know, double-minded mm -hmm. is also referring to doubt as well. Too, mm -hmm. you're thinking about this, you're thinking about that, you're thinking about all these other things. Mm -hmm. Um, your, yeah, your mind is doubled instead of being on one thing. Um, but when you're unstable, but but when you look at that scripture, even mm -hmm. though they're doubts. Mm -hmm. And you're double-minded. You're you may be unstable, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that you don't believe. You're still believe. You're still a believer. You're still saved. But we need to get that under check. We need to get that under control mm -hmm. and don't stay there, because you're doubting. You're doubting. You're at a place of doubting of what what can be done, or who or, or yeah. You're doubting what can be done, but no. Get your mind stable. Yep. Get stabilized. Amen. And don't stay there. Because and again, it doesn't mean that you're not a believer. Amen. James one and eight. It says a double minded man is unstable in, in all his ways. All his ways. It didn't say um some, but it says in all, all everything he or she does, um, is just you're not you're not stable mm -hmm. so we trust and believe god for the word of god and i'm telling you um so we thank god for you all joining us for after church um thank god for this time and uh, for after church it has been a blessing as god continued to allow us to do after church and not only just that but bring forth the word of god we are praying for you all praying for your family um that gathering will happen soon sooner than later so we thank God for you all, and we want you all to have a prosperous day, blessed day in the Lord. And if the Lord should tarry is coming, we'll see you back for midweek empowerment service at uh, Wednesday at 7 p.m. Amen. Okay, great. So, um, and as always, please stay safe. Um, we're praying for you. We love you. Um, remember to practice your social distancing. Please remember to practice your social distancing. Um, and yeah, and wearing your mask and, 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 and in these buildings and closed in places, um, 
wear your mask, please, because we have to remember um, that our children, our younger children, they're not able to be vaccinated at this time. So please do your part in helping to protect our children um, and protecting even those um, adults that can't be vaccinated. They want to be vaccinated and they're unable to be vaccinated at this time. So please, um, let's do our part in practicing our safety measures and, and keeping those hands clean, washing them, using your sanitizer. And, um, and remember, let's keep praying for each other, lifting each other up in prayer. Okay. So um, as always, we love you and we look forward to seeing you again um, on Wednesday and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Okay. Amen. God bless, bless you. Amen.